Nos atem gloria dia porta. In croce domini nostri Jesu Christi. In quo es salus vita et resurrectio nostra. Pequim salvati et liberati sumu. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we come together this holy night to begin the sacred Paschal Triduum with the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Let us begin our celebration solemnly, humbly, gratefully, acknowledging our sins and asking God's pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Christ, Christ. 
let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, one about to hand himself over to death, and trusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A 
can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. A blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful, your servant am I, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. A blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. A blessing cup is a communion the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. And to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Praise and honor to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. 
the devil had already induced Jesus, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a tower and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dried them with the tower around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you are to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that, as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Father Novak, Father Ling, I'm grateful to you and to the parish of St. Francis of Assisi for this invitation and opportunity to celebrate the beginning of the sacred triduum with you here at the beautiful church of St. Francis. In the traditional Jewish Seder supper at Passover, the youngest child asks the question, why is this night different from all other nights? I could ask the same question, but the answer would be obvious. None of us have ever begun a Paschal Triduum under these circumstances. This night is different from all other nights. With people all over the world, we are living through a time of global pandemic, this terrible health crisis of COVID-19, the novel coronavirus. People are sheltering in place. People are living in fear. People are sick. And for the first time in a hundred years, masses are not being celebrated 
in churches all over the country. The last time was during the, the Spanish influenza in 1918. So as strange and as unprecedented as this feels to all of us who are living today, it is not actually unprecedented because of a public health emergency 102 years ago, masses were suspended. We have lived through this before. That passed and this will pass as well because God is with us. Why is this night different from all other nights? Many ways, but in the context of the Seder Supper, comes a response from the, the father of the house where the supper is being eaten ritually. And the response is a retelling of the ancient story of the faith of the Hebrew people, the story of God's mighty works. In the Jewish reckoning of time, a day runs from sunset to sunset, as the Jewish Passover begins in the evening, so with the setting of the sun this evening, the church enters into the sacred Easter Triduum. We recall, we recall the saving events which God has worked for us in Christ. The Triduum is the solemn celebration of the Paschal mystery, the passion, the death, the resurrection of the Lord. It is the very heart of our Christian faith and the very center of the church's liturgical year. This triduum, these three days, which run through Sunday evening, are like no other during the year, and they invite our wholehearted participation. Even though we are engaging in these mysteries in a different way this year, under these extraordinary circumstances. Online masses sheltering in place, perhaps with family rituals, taking the place of the familiar rituals that we normally would celebrate by coming to the parish church. The Mass of the Lord's Supper, which we celebrate this evening, reminds us that our faith is rooted. It is rooted in the Paschal experience of the Hebrew people. In keeping with the Lord's instruction to Moses, the Hebrews marked the doorposts of their homes with the blood of a spotless lamb. The angel of death, seeing the blood of the lamb, passed over the homes of God's people. They were spared while the firstborn of the Egyptians were slain. In this manner, by the blood of a lamb, God delivered the Hebrews from their cruel slavery and led them by stages to the promised land, to freedom, to liberation, to deliverance. Each year, every Jewish family relives this experience of divine deliverance by sharing the Passover meal and recalling God's mighty works. This is the time of Passover for the Jewish people. These dramatic events of liberation forged the identity and consciousness of the Israelites as God's chosen people. In God's plan, those mighty deeds foreshadowed even greater works that God would reveal in Christ. All that was promised in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew scriptures, or was mysteriously revealed through signs, God fulfills in Christ. Jesus is the true, unblemished, spotless, sinless lamb whose blood is that of a new and eternal covenant which seals our hearts and delivers us from slavery to sin and from the power of death. Tonight, we focus on several aspects of this new covenant. As we recall Jesus' last supper with his apostles, a spotless, the, the, the Passover supper, we 
celebrate the institution of the Holy Eucharist as the sacrament of our new covenant in the Lord. Like the Hebrews of old and the Jews even today, who relive their deliverance from slavery each year in the Passover meal, the Mass is our real-time participation in Jesus' victory over sin and death. When Jesus institutes the sacrament of the Eucharist at the Last Supper, he anticipates and make present, makes present the sacrifice of the cross and the victory of the resurrection. The Mass and Calvary are inseparably linked together. Through every Mass, we participate in a real way in Jesus' saving death and glorious resurrection, even as our participation tonight and during these days is different through a live stream device. But every Mass is offered for the whole church and involves the whole church, the church on earth and the church in heaven. The Mass is of infinite value because Jesus' saving death and resurrection is of infinite value. Jesus is the eternal high priest of this new covenant. Through the Eucharist, he is at work at this very moment to reconcile us, to heal us, to nourish us, and to sanctify us. His deepest desire is to accompany us on our journey, on this journey, during these difficult, challenging days, to accompany us and lead us to his Father in the power of the Holy Spirit, to a share in the eternal community of love which is the banquet of heaven. After Jesus took the bread, he took the wine, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples at the Last Supper, he said, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus gave a special participation in his new and eternal priesthood to his apostles in order to continue to gather to himself a holy people from every nation so that this mystery of our redemption might be proclaimed and celebrated again and again until he comes in glory. Through the apostles and the bishops and the priests who are their successors, Jesus continues this saving work of salvation, redemption, and sanctification among us. Tonight, then, we celebrate not only the institution of the Eucharist, that first Mass, but also that of the priesthood. Because without the priesthood, there can be no Eucharist. Priests are ordained primarily to offer the Eucharistic sacrifice, to celebrate the Holy Mass, and to build up the church. So as strange as these days are for the whole church, I think they are particularly poignant for our priests as we celebrate the Mass to an empty church or in the privacy of our own little chapels, but without the people of God for whom every Mass is offered. As our love for the Eucharist deepens, especially perhaps during these times, our hunger, our longing for the Eucharist our awareness of how much the Eucharist means to us, how central the Mass is to our lives. Sometimes we never realize that until it's something we are deprived of. It's human nature. But as our hunger and for the Eucharist deepens, so too do we realize the importance of priestly vocations. Without priests to celebrate the Mass, what we are experiencing now, being deprived of the Mass, would be the, the ongoing situation. How can we receive the gift of the Lord's body and blood in the Eucharist without also begging the Lord to bless the church? How can we celebrate the Mass 
participate in the Mass, even virtually, without asking the Lord to continue to provide for the church, priests, shepherds, after his own heart, especially here in our own archdiocese, and even from our families, from this parish, from every parish, priests who will continue to dedicate their lives to bringing this precious sacrament of God's love to us. Tonight's gospel for this Mass of the Lord's Supper comes from St. John, who consistently offers the most profound reflections on the meaning of the Holy Eucharist. In St. John's Gospel, we have the beautiful bread of life discourse, John and the chapter, chapter 6, in which Jesus speaks clearly and with an alarming realism about giving his flesh as real food and his blood as real drink. Ironically, St. John, in his Gospel, is the only evangelist who does not describe the institution of the Eucharist during the Last Supper. Instead, he gives us the unforgettable account of Jesus' humble service, which we just heard, as he rises from the table, puts a towel around his waist, humbles himself before each of his apostles, and washes their feet performs the service of a slave. This gesture, first of all, is Jesus' revelation of the Father's mercy, who sends his Son to humble himself, to sanctify, to cleanse, and to redeem us. Jesus humbles himself in service to raise us up and to restore our dignity. Jesus clearly demonstrates that ministry within the church and the whole of Christian life is a service of charity. I have given you a model to follow, Jesus tells his apostles after he washes their feet, so that as I have done for you, you also should do. These words are intended, yes, for priests, but not only for priests. They are intended for all of us, for all of the faithful, Jesus' action at that first Eucharist reveals the deep meaning of the Eucharist as the sacrament of charity. Pope Benedict, some years ago, wrote about the Eucharist as the sacrament of charity, highlighting the need for a fuller understanding of the relationship between the Eucharist and our daily lives. He wrote, Eucharistic spirituality it's not just a participation in Mass and devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. It embraces the whole of life, end quote. The Eucharist enables us to gather up every concrete element of our lives and make of it true spiritual worship, offering it through, with, and in Christ as a sacrifice pleasing and acceptable to God. There must be about our lives what Pope Benedict called a Eucharistic consistency. That is a connection between what we believe and the way we act. To live the Eucharist, to live the Eucharist. Becoming servants, humbling ourselves, washing one another's feet. We have had such extraordinary examples of this humble service during these days healthcare workers around the world, putting their own lives at risk, serving the needs of their brothers and sisters, the sick and the dying, frontline workers all over our communities. These come to mind. But this kind of humble service, washing one another's feet as a daily part of family living, this is what the Eucharist must express and the nourishment that we receive in the, in the Eucharist must be lived out even as it nourishes us for this kind of service to one another. As a people formed by the saving death and resurrection of the Lord and given a share in his royal priesthood, our lives ought to be marked by that same paschal character 
that willingness to serve one another, to wash one another's feet, to live out the mystery of the Eucharist in our daily lives, to become a gift for one another. Tonight we are invited to celebrate and to ponder and to pray with these mysteries, to give thanks to the Lord, to adore Christ who offers himself for us. Even though we cannot receive him sacramentally, we can receive him spiritually and we can praise God and thank him for the gift of his son who humbled himself to wash our feet, to shed his blood, to give his life that we might live. What I have done for you, you also should do. Confident in the love and faithfulness of the Father who has given us his Son to save us from our sins, we lift up our prayers in faith. For the Church, especially Pope Francis, Archbishop Coakley, and all the priests and deacons, that they may be guided to a greater understanding of the perfect love and service of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of power and influence in the world, that they may understand something of the spirit of Christ's sacrifice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our catechumens and candidates, as they prepare for the day they join the church, may they continue to be enlightened by the Holy Spirit in their journey and continue to know of Christ's presence in their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have lost their jobs or are suffering financial hardship, may they come to experience comfort and security, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. In thanksgiving, for the dedication of our public servants and healthcare workers and their families. Restore their mental and emotional resources when they have been depleted. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who cannot be with us due to illness and isolation, that though they are absent, they may know they are one with us in prayer and so receive our blessing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Dominic Pham, for whom this Mass is offered, that the sacrifice of this Eucharist may bring them to eternal life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, look with favor on your church gathered in prayer. Receive the petitions we place before you, confident in your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Jokum demo, time amus et amemus, Deum vivum, et ex corde diligamus, nos in cero. Ubi caritas et amor, Deus ibi est. Simul ego cum in unum, Congregamus, ne nos mente Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through who Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as he is memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis und Celia Terra Gloria Tua, Osana in excelsis, Benedictus Vivenit in nomine Domini, Osana in excelsis.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray. Graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, though through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Bring them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us.
day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is, today. He took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the bread to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar manner, when supper was ended, he took the pre this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the pa Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high, of your, your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation in the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, 
from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. Omnus eis, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Omnus dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Omnus dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacea. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. O corpus, quod probobis fraditus, id calix novitas tamantias, in meos domine, dicit dominus. Oc facit est, quos ias cumque sumitis, in meam commemorationam. This is my body, which is given up for you, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Each time that you partake thereof, do it in memory of me. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. 
never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Obviously, this Holy Week is very different than what we are accustomed to, and I understand why, but I can't say that I'm very happy about it. But in times like this, we find silver linings, and I think our silver lining for us is to celebrate the Mass tonight with our own Archbishop here at St. Francis as the principal celebrant for this Mass of the Lord's Supper. We're very honored that you've been here with us this evening and joining us in this Mass in this very holy night. Typically, the Holy Thursday liturgy ends with the priest putting on a humeral veil and then taking the Blessed Sacrament in the ciborium and walking through the aisles of the church, a dimly lit church with incense and candles as the choir and as we all sing the Pange Lingua. Holy Thursday night is really my favorite of the three liturgies and one of the most powerful moments is this moment. For some reason, it always grabs me as I walk down the aisles and as the congregation genuflects and kneels as the Blessed Sacrament passes them, it's such a, a beautiful, powerful moment when I, as your priest, can see how much you love the Lord by bowing down before him in adoration on this holy night. And then to take the Blessed Sacrament to another place, for us here at St. Francis, it's typically in our parish hall, and we spend then time in prayer with him on this night before he suffers and dies. So though we will not be doing that this evening, I do encourage you to make some time when you can stay watch and keep watch with the Lord as his disciples did in the garden as he asked them to stay awake and keep watch with him. I invite you to find some private time, some time in the next this evening or tomorrow when you can be quiet with the Lord and keep watch with him on this holy night, in this holy time. Please know of my prayers and Father Ling, our prayers for you uh, in these holy days and how we look forward and long for the time when we can celebrate together in person at the altar. Thank you. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 